In this video, we're talking about how to sketch level curves for a multivariable function, meaning whether you're given the equation of a multivariable function or the graph of a multivariable function, how do you sketch the curves that are created when you slice that function with perfectly horizontal level slices? So we're going to be going through three examples, and the first one we want to look at is the equation we've been given z equals x squared plus y squared. So it's obviously a multivariable function because it's an equation for z defined in terms of two variables. So we have multiple variables in the equation. It's a multivariable function, which means we can sketch level curves. So what do we mean when we say level curves? Well, the easiest way to illustrate it is to look at the graph of this multivariable function. So if we were to sketch out the three-dimensional graph, z equals x squared plus y squared, it would look like this. It would be the paraboloid with its vertex at the origin that opens up around the z-axis. This is the three-dimensional graph of this equation. So when we say level curves, here's what we mean. The key is to remember the word level. So we're saying level curves. We want to remember that word level because when you think about something that's level, it's perfectly level or flat or even. And in a three-dimensional coordinate system, the plane that's level is the xy plane. So if we want to think about a level plane, we're talking about a plane that is parallel to the xy plane. So it would be a plane, if we were to sketch it, that would be perfectly parallel to the xy plane. So maybe something like this, I'm trying to go parallel to both the x-axis and the y-axis so that you can see that this plane is perfectly parallel with the x-y plane. So we're talking about a plane like that that slices through this three-dimensional graph. So what we're asking is, when we slice through this three-dimensional graph with a perfectly level, flat, horizontal plane, what two-dimensional graph is created? In other words, where does this plane intersect this three-dimensional figure? And with a paraboloid, and this is a common example you'll see all the time with sketching level curves, with a paraboloid, if we were to slice this with a horizontal plane, what we would get is a level curve that is a circle, assuming that this paraboloid is perfectly circular. So when we cut through this with a horizontal sheet of paper, what it slices through or where it intersects is around the edge of this paraboloid in a circle. And if we think about this, where we drew this visually, let's maybe say that this circle is intersecting the z-axis, maybe write it z equals 2. Well, if we move up here maybe to z equals 4 and we take another plane and slice through, we're going to get another circle that comes around the paraboloid like this, and that might be at z equals 4. But no matter where we slice this paraboloid, as long as we're above z equals 0, we're going to end up with a circle. The closer we are to z equals 0, the smaller the circle. The higher we go up, the larger the circle will be. Of course, right at z equals 0, the level curve would just be a singular point, and below z equals 0, there would be no level curves at all because the three-dimensional graph doesn't exist there. So that's what we mean by level curves, and that's what we're being asked to do when we're asked to sketch level curves. We want to give these circles back when we're asked to sketch the level curves of this multivariable function. So when we do that, we go ahead and we set up a two-dimensional xy coordinate system. So we say we have the xy coordinate system here, and if we want to sketch the level curves of this paraboloid, then we can go ahead and sketch perfect circles around the origin. This paraboloid is centered at the origin with its vertex at the origin, so our circles will be symmetrical here about the origin, not shifted off one way or another. So that's graphically how we sketch level curves, but what about algebraically? Is there a way to do this with math. And yes, there is. So we can, of course, visualize the level curves by looking at the three-dimensional graph and then realizing, okay, I have this paraboloid. I can see that the level curves are going to be circles. So I want to go over to my two-dimensional graph 
and sketch circles. But if that's difficult or impossible to visualize or we need to do this mathematically, we can. Here's what we want to do. We want to find z in the equation. In this case, it's easy because we have z on the left-hand side here. And we want to go ahead and replace that with a constant. And usually we call that constant c for these kinds of problems. So instead of saying z equals x squared plus y squared, we want to say c equals x squared plus y squared. And that c is a constant. And then we want to go ahead and replace that c with lots of different constant values. So for example, we could replace c with 1. And when we do that, what we get is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Well, now if we remember, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the equation of a circle in two-dimensional space that's centered at the origin with a radius of 1. If we replace c with 4, we would get x squared plus y squared equals 4, which we know is a circle in two-dimensional space that's centered at the origin with a radius of 2. Because remember, the equation for a circle is always x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. So to find the radius, we take the square to the right-hand side. So if along here we have x equals 1, we have x equals 2, and we have x equals 3, then this inner level curve here would correspond to x squared plus y squared equals 1, because this circle has a radius of 1. x squared plus y squared equals 4 would correspond to this second circle with the radius of 2. And x squared plus y squared equals 9 would correspond with this outermost circle, which has a radius of 3. So algebraically, all we're doing is replacing the z with the constant c, and then replacing that c with different values to get simple equations. Notice that all these equations are equations for a two-dimensional figure or two-dimensional curve. We've eliminated the z, so all of these can be sketched in the two-dimensional plane. Let's go ahead and look at another example. In this one, we have z equals the square root of 1 minus x squared over 4 minus y squared. Now, this one is a little harder to sketch right off the bat in three-dimensional space, unlike this one, which is the standard form for the equation of a paraboloid. So we might be able to figure out quickly, because we know it, that this is the paraboloid centered at the origin that opens upward. So we can move to that step really quickly. This one isn't as clear. One thing we can do is try to manipulate this function or rewrite it so that the figure that it creates is a little more clear to us. Sometimes that'll be helpful. So for example, we could square both sides to get rid of the square root, and we would end up with z squared is equal to 1 minus x squared over 4 minus y squared. We could add x squared over 4 and y squared to both sides, and we would get x squared over 4 plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And now we may recognize that this is the equation of an ellipsoid or a three-dimensional ellipse. It looks like a blimp that's extended or elongated along the x-axis because we have this constant here in the denominator underneath the x. When that's the case, the like blimp-like figure is longer along the x-axis, and then by comparison, a thinner width along the y and z axes. So based on this equation, we would be able to sketch the ellipsoid that is elongated along the x-axis, and so here's what that would look like. This is a terrible drawing, but we could try to sketch it somewhat. At least we would, in general, know that the three-dimensional graph was an ellipsoid that was longer along the x-axis. So then, of course, if we're trying to sketch level curves, we're slicing this horizontally. And what we would see is that we're just going to get ellipses. So over here, we got circles. But over here, we'll get ellipses that will look something like this along the edge. And then as we kind of go around behind, we'll look something like this and centered here. And if we were to go up higher along the z-axis, we would get something closer to the top of it, maybe if we're kind of looking from above it, that is centered up here. If we were to go down below, we would get a smaller ellipse as well. 
So if it's an ellipsoid, then we're going to have ellipses or oval shapes for level curves. And so then if we were going to sketch those in the two-dimensional plane, we know that the three-dimensional figure is extended out along the x-axis farther than along the y-axis. So we want to sketch this further out along the x-axis than the y-axis. In other words, it needs to be longer in the x direction than it is in the y direction. And then we could sketch another one inside this and another one inside that. And remember before we said that this was the same here as x squared over four plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one. And that was in the standard form of an ellipsoid. What we could have done then is replaced z with the constant c. So we would have written x squared over four plus y squared plus c squared is equal to one. And then we could have started to replace c with different constant values. So let's pretend, for example, that c was equal to zero. Well, that would eliminate that term, and we would get x squared over four plus y squared is equal to one. Now we've eliminated the third variable, so we just have x and y, and we can sketch this in the two-dimensional plane as a level curve. You might recognize this immediately as an ellipse, but if you don't, no problem at all. You can still just plug in different values for x or y, solve for the other variable, and plot points to sketch the level curve, even if you don't know that this is an ellipse that's elongated along the x-axis. And we would continue to do that. So we could plug in another value for c. Let's say c is equal to 1. We would get here 1 squared, which is 1. And then we could subtract 1 from both sides. That would eliminate this term. Over here on the right, we get one minus one or zero, and we'd end up with x squared over four plus y squared is equal to zero. And we just continue on like that. Usually you wanna find at least three equations for level curves. So we found three over here. You'd wanna find three over here, get those equations. And then once you have those equations, if you know what they look like, you can go ahead and sketch them and you wanna tie them together. So for example, you can label these and say this is where c is equal to 1, this is where c is equal to 4, and this is where c is equal to 9. Same thing over here, you'd want to find three equations, graph those in the 2D plane, and then label each one with the corresponding value of c. And then let's go ahead and do one more example. In this one, we have z equals x plus y. And if we sketch that in three-dimensional space, what we see is that we have a plane. And that should make sense to us because both our x and y variables are linear. They're raised to the first power, as opposed to here we have x squared and y squared. Here we have x squared and y squared. All of our variables here, z, x, and y, are linear, they're first degree variables, which means that we're definitely gonna have a plane. And whenever you have a plane, your level curves are always going to be lines. It's just a matter of the direction that they go in. So here our level curves were ellipses, here our level curves were circles. Sometimes your level curves can be lines or hyperbolas or parabolas. In this case, when the three-dimensional figure is a plane, the level curves will all be lines. So what does that look like? Well, let's go ahead and do our trick with C. So we're gonna replace the Z with a C and get C is equal to X plus Y. And then we're gonna replace that value of C with different constants. So let's go ahead and say zero is equal to X plus Y. And if we rewrite that, we'll subtract an X from both sides. We wanna solve these for Y if we can and we'll get y is equal to zero minus x or just negative x. If we go ahead and plug in one for c, we get one is equal to x plus y. If we subtract x from both sides, we get y is equal to negative x plus one or one minus x. If we plug in two for c, we'll get two is equal to x plus y, and then we subtract x from both sides and we get y is equal to negative x plus two. Okay, so now we have three different equations. 
let's go ahead and see if we can plot them in the 2D plane. Well, here, y is equal to negative x. We know that that's the line that passes through the origin with a slope of negative 1. So we can go ahead and sketch that in. So that's the level curve we get when c is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and label that c equals 0. If I want to sketch y equals negative x plus 1, well, this is in slope intercept form. So I know my y intercept is positive 1, and I have the same slope, negative x. So I can go ahead and reposition this at about y equals 1 right there through the origin, and I can go ahead and sketch that. And that's the line that corresponds to c equals 1. For c equals 2, I have y equals negative x plus 2. That is in slope intercept form where we go through the y axis at about y equals 2. So we can go ahead and sketch this here, something like that. And we can label that as c equals 2. And obviously, you're starting to see the pattern here. All of my lines are parallel going in the exact same direction. So I could continue to sketch them down here below or up here above if I wanted to, but three is certainly plenty. So just to recap, when it comes to sketching level curves, you have two options. You can do it algebraically or mathematically, first of all. And what you want to do in that case is replace Z with C and then replace that constant C with different values to come up with at least three equations that are in terms of just X and Y. And once you have three equations that are in terms of X and Y, you can go ahead and sketch those in the XY plane. Sometimes it'll be obvious, like you should know that X squared plus Y squared equals one is a circle. Sometimes it might not be as obvious. And in that case, you can simply plot points in the XY plane to sketch the level curve. When you sketch the level curves, make sure you sketch all three and label them with the associated value of C. Or you can do this graphically. You may know or you may be able to quickly determine what the three-dimensional graph looks like. And in that case, you can go ahead and sketch the three-dimensional graph in three-dimensional space. And then you should be able to see from what that graph looks like what the level curves will be. And you just want to imagine slicing that three-dimensional graph horizontally parallel to the x, y plane with a plane at different heights of z and thinking about what the intersection of that plane and your three-dimensional figure will be in order to determine what the level curves will look like. And then you just want to go ahead and translate those into the two-dimensional x, y plane. <laughs>